Hey everyone, the name's Eric Thor, and I I believe that there is a great misunderstanding about INFJs. So there is a misunderstanding that INFJs are secretive. I think often what people see as secretiveness is uh, a commitment to truth, deeper truth, meaningful truth, long-term truth. Often I think people look so much at the short term and they often expect quick, easy answers about what's right and wrong. But INFJs can't offer these things. It's hard for to be an INFJ and to be in the role where people expect you to have the truth, to have wisdom, to have awareness of everything so quickly. When often you believe personally that wisdom is hard to find, that it requires deep introspection, long-term thinking. It requires you to really dig into yourself, really go into yourself, really question yourself, really search your feelings, really search your truth. When an INFJ is pressured to share the truth too early, what tends to come up tends to be wrong. If an INFJ shares early, often what they tend to share is not the truth, it's uh, whatever they will, can, can say to get other people away from them, whatever they can say to uh, make sure that they get their process. because. It's hard to really get an INFJ to value anything higher than truth. It's hard to ask an INFJ to uh, compromise the search for truth for simple answers. It's hard to rush an INFJ. It's one of the worst things you can do with any introvert, to rush them, to ask for speed, to ask for quickness. Uh, if you are able to, and I can think, I can understand that that is difficult, uh, be patient with an introvert. I think that's the most rewarding thing you can be. Often that's when you get the most grand answers, the most deep truths. There is a compromise to be found for sure between introverts and extroverts. I believe that uh, it can be the case that sometimes INFJs and INTJs postpone and uh, spend too long searching for the right answer when uh, often they already know. It can be the case sometimes, it can definitely be the case sometimes that INFJs and INTJs fear the truth and that they spend too long double checking and making sure that everything is right before they pursue it. Often, of course, what an INFJ or an INTJ deals with is speculation and guesswork. It's not as easy to be an INFJ or an INTJ than to be an ISTJ or an ISFJ because ISFJs and ISTJs, they deal with certainty. They deal with what you can see, what you can know, what you have proof of. It's much easier to know what you have proof of than to know the secret answer to a difficult question. It's hard to speculate, but it's easy to be certain. Uh, and um, INFJs and INTJs have an important reputation to uphold. Obviously, uh, the only thing that can get other people to take you seriously if you deal with speculation is that other people can see that you have been right in the past. If other people can trust that the things you have said in the past have rung true, then they can trust what you are saying now. But if they can't trust that, if they are new to you, if they haven't seen your predictions and if they haven't seen that they ring true, then of course uh, everything the INFJ or the INTJ says is going to be handled with a great deal of salt. Um, at least, if the, at least that's healthy, that's healthy, it's good to not take an INFJ and an INTJ at face value. Um, and so, because of this, I think INFJs and INTJs have an important reputation to uphold. They have to make sure that their answers are true, they have to double check their equations and their uh, answers and to make sure that they are not just blindly guessing, because if you blindly guess and you're always wrong, of course nobody's going to believe you, nobody's going to think you're telling the truth. Um, because of this, I think INFJs and INTJs hate being rushed, hate being pressured for quick answers. And I think what a lot of INFJs and INTJs do in this situation is they learn to speak like Yoda. I don't mean like this you must speak, I mean uh, to speak in abstract or complex jargon, to speak in vague terms rather than specific terms to learn to be broad but not too specific because often people will make fun of the things that you had wrong but they will not care about the things you had right. They will see the little things that you, have, you didn't get right and they will use it to disregard everything else you said. So you have to be careful when you handle with the approximations. You have to uh, learn to not rush answers and not to pretend to know when you don't. 
I think it's uh, a lot of INFJs and INTJs idealize pretending to know when you don't, acting like you don't know when you don't. And I can see the alert to that in the short term perspective because, well, if you seem certain, if you speak in certain terms, other people will think you're right even when you're wrong. Um, and I can actually, uh, but I can warn that uh, this can backfire in the longer perspective. The sad thing, I think, is that, of course, a lot of people tend to forget very easily. So, a lot of the time, if you pretend to know and you don't really know, a lot of the time people won't even notice. this. People don't notice the mistakes as much as you do. Um, at least, I guess, it's both sad and good, I guess. Um, I think INFJs and INTJs uh, practice a healthy form of forgetfulness. I think a lot of the time, um, it, uh, it, sometimes it's important to know the past and sometimes it's not that important. Sometimes the past is uh, <laughs> uh, kind of going to cloud you from the future and if you're dealing with the future and if you're interested in the future you can sometimes stare yourself blind. I think a lot of INFJs and INTJs come into this later on where they start to believe that everything walks in circles, that we're all going to return to uh, the past, that everything is just going to go in circles over and over and over. And uh, that is one way to see it, of course, but that is kind of something that will uh, <laughs> make your speculation somewhat limited. It will mean that you won't be able to deal with what's new. You won't be able to predict what's going to happen. You're not going to predict changes. What you're going to predict it will be the past uh, as, it, this, as you're headed to it. You're going to say that what we are leading to in the future is going to be the past or a version of it and then another version of it and then another version of it. <laughs> so often I think it's important to not fall into this trap of the past because the past can really control your thinking, it can really narrow it down and it can get you to walk in circles. I think a lot of people fall into the trap of thinking in circles. And uh, thinking in circles is um, of course secure, it's like a stable way to think because uh, you're never really wrong. A lot of the time very little actually does change. things. Uh, I think a lot of time young INFJs and INTJs tend to say 10 years from now the world will be so different and then they realize 10 years later that uh, well most of things are actually kind of the same today and that also kind of helps narrow down and helps you realize that yes things can change a great deal but a lot of things also tend to remain the same. Uh, so what's going to change? What's actually going to happen? Um, you kind of learn to be a little more pragmatic about it after a while. Uh, pragmatic about where the future is going to lead. And uh, I should also say that INFJs and INTJs have completely different ways of reading the future. INFJs, um, I mean INTJs, they read the future by reading charts, by speculating on trends and economic changes and uh, political trends, but uh, INFJs, they speculate quite much more blindly and much more fluidly. In many ways they dream of, they envision a dream of the future. And I guess um, you could argue that in many ways INFJs are driven by something that is completely science fiction. Uh, an INFJ's whole mo motor uh, of uh, fuel, their whole uh, <laughs> kind of uh, thing drive is science fiction, uh, it's uh, like this, uh, or maybe like a fantasy sci-fi version, a future fantasy novel, like it's uh, very much the true that I think INFJs are driven by like a Star Wars ideal of the world, uh, where they see or envision some kind of world with uh, aliens, with uh, radical changes, with uh, beautiful new world cities and uh, things that are completely out of today's world. Where INTJs tend to uh, be driven more like in the sense of uh, something, um, something a little more actually science fiction, a little more actually realistic science fiction. Uh, like uh, uh, <laughs> how like motor prices or oil prices are gonna go or how uh, 
uh, financial trends will change. It's a little different, but it's still kind of interesting. <laughs> I I should probably return to the subject of INFJ and INTJ secrecy and just round up by saying uh, it's important to give INFJs and INTJs time and I think it's important to um, rush them in a healthy way and I think that's what you can do when an INFJ isn't giving you an answer or when they, when they won't share their thoughts with you is you can tell them this encouraging affirmation. You... Uh, sorry. <laughs> You already, <laughs> uh, you already know uh, what you want, you just have to act on it. Because that I think can really help get the INFJ's fear of what's true or what they think is true go away. And that can get them away from the whole uh, overthinking, over speculation uh, thing where they can overly speculate on things that are not going to happen or are just going to waste their time or just it's, when it's just fear, when it's just fear keeping them from uh, exploring what they believe is true. So um, give them that affirma affirmation but don't force them to give the answer. Just give them that the affirmation, the knowing that they know, they already do know, if they want to, they can already have an answer right today. It's all up to them when they want to have an answer and they don't have to overthink it. They don't have to uh, spend five years uh, deciding if they want to pursue a relationship. They know already, if they want to know, they will know. So just encourage them to know and just encourage them to trust their intuition because I think uh, the biggest issue to INFJ or INTJ secrecy is that lack of trust in your intuition, that uh, feeling that your intuition isn't valid or as good as an ISTJ or an ISFJ's way of uh, seeing the world. So that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did leave a like, share or subscribe and as always may your neurons be with you.